This is Nick with LogosByNick.com and in this tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can create this comic book style logo using Adobe Illustrator. But before we get started, if you'd like to sharpen your logo design skills, be sure to check out my Logo Design Academy. It's an 18 part video series where I outline my entire creative process for coming up with logo ideas from start to finish. I'll have a link in the description of the video if you want to check that out. So to get us started here in Illustrator, the first thing we want to do is just make sure we set up our workflow so that we are all working with a similar setup. I want to come up here where it says view and make sure you have nothing here selected, nothing like snap to pixel or smart guides. If any of that is turned on, just go ahead and turn it off for the duration of this tutorial. And then up here where it says window, we're going to want to choose control, align, and color. And that's these menus over here. We're going to want those open for now. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a rectangle in the middle of the page here. I'm going to create the halftone pattern in the background first. So let me grab the uh, rectangle tool, which is over here. And I'm just going to click and drag on the canvas and then hold shift so that it makes a perfectly symmetrical uh, square like that in the center of the page. And I'm going to center that up on the page by coming over here to the align menu and make sure we have align to artboard selected and then center this up on the vertical and horizontal axis like that. Now what I want to do is get rid of this black outline, otherwise known as the stroke. So I'm going to click on this black stroke right here to enable that and click this red X to get rid of that. And what I'll do now is I'll come over here to the color panel and I actually want to open up the gradient menu. So the gradient menu should be located right next to the color panel in a separate tab. If it's not, just come over here to where it says window and click on gradient and it will pull up that menu right there. And I'm just going to click on this button right here to give this a black and white or a white to black gradient. I want to make this a radial gradient. And I want to flip this around so black is on the inside and white is on the outside. So I'll click this little flip icon right here, reverse gradient. And that's what we're looking for. Now what I want to do is grab the gradient tool, which is over here, and take this little black circle right here and bring this out a little bit. Just a little bit like that so that we have more uh, a darker center inside of that gradient. Now what I want to do is grab the select tool. And I want to go to Effect, Pixelate, Pixelate and click on Color Halftone. And in the menu here, I want to change everything to 32. If you notice here, I already have it set up. Just go through and change all of these values to 32. Then go ahead and click OK. And you will notice it creates a halftone pattern on the canvas there. Now, if you zoom in on this, if you hold Alt and roll up the mouse wheel to zoom in, you can see this is not a vector. This is a raster or a pixelated uh, a, a, a raster image. What I want to do to convert this to a vector is I will go to Object, and I will click on Expand Appearance. And then I will go back to Object and go to Image Trace and then click on Make and Expand. And it will trace a vector copy over the top of it like that. So all we have to do now is ungroup this. I'm going to press Control Shift and G to ungroup it. And if you click off of it, it should be ungrouped now. You can take this white piece in the background and get rid of that. Press Delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. And I want to take this and just move this off of the page so I can see what it looks like. If you notice, there's still some white in there. So let me click off of it to deselect it. To move the page around, I'm just pressing down the space bar and clicking and dragging like that. I want to zoom in on this area right here to get rid of those white spaces. So I'm going to hold Alt and roll up the mouse wheel. Click on that white space, press Delete on the keyboard to get rid of it. Do the same thing for these other ones. Just click and press Delete to get rid of them. Now we can zoom back out. What I want to do is click and drag over all of this right now and group it together by pressing Control G and then center that back up on the page there. So I'll center it up on the horizontal and vertical axis like that. And what I want to do now is I want to create a star shape going over the top of this that will act as a backdrop for our comic logo here. So I'm going to click and hold over the rectangle tool right here to get this fly out menu and I want to choose the star tool. And I just want to click once on the canvas over here to bring up this menu. And in the star menu I want to choose 10 pixels, 50 pixels, and eight for the points. And once you've done that, go ahead and click OK. And if you notice, it will put this little star shape over here in the corner. So what I want to do now is let me come over here to the Direct Select tool, click on that, and I want to click and drag over these inside corners over here. Hold Shift while clicking and dragging over them so we can select all of them. We want to select all of those corners like that. And then I want to grab this little round handles right here, the little round node, and pull this out all the way to the end until it highlights red like that. And then we end up with this shape right here. That's what we're looking for. So now let's go back to the Select tool. Click off of that to deselect it. Take this, bring it towards the center of the page. Center it up on the horizontal and vertical axis like that. And then scale this up by clicking and dragging one of these corner nodes and hold Shift and Alt 
and scale that up like that. Maybe a little more. And that's looking pretty good. That's going to be a black backdrop for the colored version of the shape. So let me copy that by pressing Control C on the keyboard, or you can go to Edit Copy. I'm just going to press Control C, and I want to paste another copy of it right on top of that original copy. So I'm going to go to Paste in Place, which is Edit, Paste in Place, or I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut, which is Control, Shift, and V. And nothing vis visibly changed on your page there, but if you notice, it put another copy of it right there. So I want to take that other copy, and I want to give this a fill color. So let me come over here. Let me give this a fill. Let me uh, come back up here to where it says RGB. Make this a shade of green. You can make this whatever color you want. I used green for this tutorial. Grab the select tool. Uh, let me scale this down. Hold shift and alt so it scales down from the center like that and proportionately. And right there, that's about what we're looking for. We want to have a little bit of the black star in the background sticking out from it like that. Okay, so now that's out of the way. What we're going to do now is we're going to create some comic style text to go over the top of this design right here. So to do that, let's grab the text tool and let's click on the canvas to generate some text. And I'm going to come up here to where it says uh, the font. The default font here is Myriad Pro. I'm going to click on that and the font I'm going to use is Comica Axis, which is right here. Uh, if you don't have this font installed, I will put a link in the description to where you can download it. Let me zoom in on this. I want to change this text to just say boom to match the uh, the thumbnail. You could write whatever you want here. I'm just using boom because it's good, you know, it's good like placeholder text for a comic design. Now let me take the select tool. Let me scale this up. Again, holding shift so it locks the proportions. And I'm going to move this off of the canvas over here, off of the artboard and into the gray space over here because I'm going to be working with white a little bit. So let me scale this up some more. I'm going to come over here to where it says type and go to create outlines. And then I'm going to ungroup it by pressing Control, Shift, and G, and then click off of it to deselect everything. And it should be separate letters now, like that. Now let me zoom in on this. I'm going to take this first letter O right here, and then hold Shift and take this letter M, and then just move them up slightly. I'm, I'll even hold Shift to lock it onto the vertical axis like that. We just want to move it up like that. I want to take this and move this in a little bit. Let me hold Shift and click that so we have them both selected. I'll move this in a little bit. Shift click this, move this in, and then same thing over here, move this in a little closer like that. Just so it has a little more character, it looks more like a uh, like an action comic book type of text. So what I'm going to do now is, let me take this, I'm going to select all of that, and I'm going to make this white, and then I'm going to copy it by pressing Control C, and then I'm going to paste it in place by pressing Control, Shift, and V, and it pasted another copy in place. I want to make this copy black. And what I want to do now is right-click this and go to Arrange and Send to the Back, or Send to Back, like that. Now I'm going to give this an offset so that it's larger or thicker than the white text. So I'll come over here to where it says Object. We're looking for Path, and we're going to choose Offset Path. And go ahead and enable preview to see how it looks. I have mine set at 20 pixels. I may bring that down a little bit. The uh, size you should use will depend on how big you made your text. We're just looking. You, you can just eyeball it. We want some want some good a good size padding around the text there. If you notice there, that's a pretty good thickness like that. I'll go ahead and click OK. And now I want to give this a little bit of depth, almost like a 3D kind of effect where like there's another copy of it coming this way. So with this still selected, I'm going to click and drag on it, then hold Shift and Alt and then bring it down into the right like this diagonally. Down like that. And then you can let go of Shift and Alt. And if you notice, it added some depth to it. But what we have to do now is close in these areas right here. Close in this area and close in this area. So to do that, let me click on this larger letter B, then hold Shift and click this one over here as well. And with them both selected, go to Object, Blend, and click on Blend Options. And from this drop down, we're going to want to choose Specify Distance and make this one pixel, then go ahead and click OK. And if you notice, actually no, you have to go to Make, Object, Blend, and once you've done that, go ahead and click on Make. And then you'll see it closed in that area right there. That's, that's what we're looking for. So let me come over here and do the same thing. See the exclamation point, this letter on the end. Shift click both of those. Object, Blend. This time we can just click on Make. We don't have to go back to the Blend options. We can just click Make. There you go, and it closed it in like that. So now we have our text. What I'm going to do is click and drag over all of the text, group it together by pressing Control G on the keyboard. Let me zoom out a little bit. And then just move this over your graphic like that. You could even center it up. 
on the vertical and horizontal axis like that. You can scale it, adjust it to it, adjust it until it is set to a, a size that you think looks good. I think that looks pretty good right there. Maybe a little smaller. Again, we're holding Shift and Alt while we scale so that it locks the proportions and it scales it from the center. And then one final thing I'd like to do is just give this a little bit of a shear. So I'll click on this to select it. I'll come over here to the Rotate tool. Click and hold over the Rotate tool and look for Shear right here. Click on Shear. And then bring your cursor to the, out, the outside right edge of the text and just click up a little bit just to shear that up. Maybe even hold Shift to lock it to a, a vertical a vertical shear like that. And that right there is what we're looking for. So let me grab the select tool, click off it to deselect everything. And there we go, our design is finished. So I think that should do it for this tutorial. That's how you can go about creating this um, comic book style logo design using Adobe Illustrator. If you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching. Before I end the video, I'd just like to let you know that you can watch all future tutorials without ads and before I upload them to YouTube at logosbynick.com. Just click the red bell at the bottom of the page to get notifications, and every time a new tutorial is posted, you'll get to watch it before it gets uploaded to YouTube and without any advertisements. If you have any questions, leave a comment below, and as always, thanks for watching.